Hey everyone, Steve here with Phantom History. Thanks so much for checking us out on YouTube, and if you enjoy our content, make sure you subscribe. Enjoy this episode. While she was standing in what used to be the doctor's office of the former home for juvenile boys, Connie Brenner saw the full-bodied apparition. It was a man, she said, and passed by without making a sound. Later, during that same investigation, she felt someone, or something, grab onto her leg. Connie describes herself as someone who needs personal proof of the paranormal to believe that a place is haunted. That was plenty to convince the paranormal investigator that Preston Castle in Ione, California was the home to spirits and is, in fact, 100% haunted. I'm Steve Blanchard. Welcome to Phantom History. In a rural area of California, about 40 miles from Sacramento, sits a building atop a hill that resembles a castle. The Preston School of Industry, more commonly referred to as Preston Castle, is named after State Senator Edward Myers Preston, who originally proposed the reform school. It was to house wards, or minors, under the guardianship of the state, but not necessarily juvenile offenders, to receive guidance, education, and learn skilled trades. On June 13, 1894, the first wards were accepted at Preston School of Industry, and the school was proclaimed officially opened on July 1, 1894. The next year is when electricity was installed. At its peak, the Preston School of Industry encompassed 1,000 acres, 750 of which were farmland, and housed 800 wards, employed a staff of 200 people, and utilized approximately 50 buildings. Sybil Griffith, who now works in the administration of the building, is familiar with the long history of Preston Castle, and she has a personal tie to the historic landmark. I moved here when I was three years old. My father took a job as a parole agent for the Preston School of Industry, which is the um, newer facility once Preston Castle itself um, had stopped being used as a building for um, the wards. So we moved here because of this magnificent place. It is a very large building built in a Romanesque revival architecture. And it was built that way because of some research that a couple of people did. And they went and looked at other youth authorities. So this was going to be a youth authority that they wanted to place. Actually, was started out, they were going to build it near Folsom Prison, which is in Folsom, California. They decided to put it in a more rural type of setting. So then um, went and looked at some buildings and um, got some drawings together and they liked another building that looks like a castle. So then they started out and just built this magnificent 4,500 square foot building of brick and mortar and it's beautiful. And it, it does, it looks like a castle with a tower and the whole thing. Preston Castle housed boys as young as seven years old and as old as 21. It was in operation for 66 years and closed its doors as a juvenile center in 1960. While it was originally built to help young boys and young men who did not have a structured home life, it also eventually turned into a detention center for boys with a more criminal path. Fear and depression were common emotions among the wards who entered the building, and not everyone was treated as well as they should have been. Paranormal investigator Connie Brennan has worked with Preston Castle to provide paranormal tours of the building and its complex. She believes that while there is nothing evil lurking at Preston Castle, there are plenty of upset, angry, and depressed spirits of both the boys who were forced to stay there and the staff recruited to care for them. I kind of feel like there's a revolving door. We get, you know, anything from boys to staff to guards. The infirmary was also used as the town hospital, the local hospital. So I'm sure that there were deaths that occurred there in the building that weren't necessarily inmates or wards or staff. It could be a, a variety, but I would say most of the time it's We've got maybe a guard or two and some of the boys. 
Connie offers paranormal tours and investigations at Preston Castle during its high season, typically January through July. She's familiar with the building's layout and history, but that wasn't necessarily the case the first time she investigated it. It was during that initial investigation, before she worked regularly at the castle, that she realized that some of the former tenants and employees of Preston Castle were still wandering its halls. I've always been kind of one of those people that I need to have an actual experience, you know, personal experience. I used to say, you know, let the boogeyman pat me on the shoulder type thing. My very first night ever going up there, I was just a, a regular guest going up there to do a paranormal investigation. And I saw a full body apparition for the very first time that night. And um, I was also touched. I could definitely tell it looked like a man in a white jacket. We were in the doctor's office area, and um, which is just one of many rooms throughout the whole castle. And I saw what looked like a, a man in a white jacket just walk down the hallway. There was a girl that had her back towards the door and I asked her, can you go and look and see? I couldn't hear anything, but I wanted her to check and see if somebody had just walked down, you know, the the hallway and she went and looked and there was nobody. The other group that was there was in a totally different part of the building. There was nobody there that actually had like, I thought maybe a white hoodie or something like that. So I'm pretty convinced it was a doctor. I was touched in the infirmary area. It's on the same floor. The castle um, is shaped like a giant T. The infirmary area was added on at a later point to the rest of the castle. And so same floor, but just a different area of the floor. By the end of that night, I was 100% convinced this place is haunted. Connie believes the apparition she saw was a residual spirit. It didn't acknowledge her nor her team and seemed to be doing its rounds. Other spirits, she says, seem to be way more active. She says that since tours returned to the castle following the COVID-19 pandemic, spirits throughout the complex appear more active than ever. And she says it's rare that tour guests don't experience some type of strange activity during their investigation, regardless of their familiarity with the paranormal. It's been kind of an uptick in activity since the pandemic and us having to be closed for so long. I mean, I remember going into the, into the castle during the pandemic and you could almost feel the sadness and the loneliness like it was it was almost like they missed us you know what i mean it was just a really is a really odd feeling walking in there after not being able to go in for so long a lot of people are seeing they'll see like black shadows or black blobs and or you know shadow figures or something like that if they don't see that a lot of people they'll feel things like they may feel a heaviness in a room or Sometimes even in areas they'll feel maybe a little sick to their stomach or, you know, feelings of being overwhelmed. Because if you think about what happened there, you know, there's a bunch of these boys, you know, coming in, probably scared to death, not knowing what they were going to, you know, run into. And so I'm sure as far as emotions go, they were probably pretty heightened, especially as they entered the castle. Sybil, while not a paranormal investigator, has had a few experiences in the building. She shares that footsteps sometimes follow her through the halls, and she's convinced that her two-year-old granddaughter, who sometimes accompanies her to work, can see things that many adults cannot. I, I always tell people when they ask me, do you think the building's haunted? I say, no, it's not haunted. Because to me, the word haunted means that there are these spirits that don't like you and they want you to go away so they do mean, malicious things. What I do believe is that there are spirits in the castle and that, especially our paranormals, I know they come here and they bring toys for the boys sometimes and, and things to leave for them because they feel that as well as I do, um, that the boys are in good spirits and like to have people here. 
um, I my life changing event was that the fact that I am now raising my granddaughter who is two years old now, um, and I believe that she sees something here once in a while. I've actually been holding her, and she had we've come into the, the building. I'm holding her, and she'll look at something and she'll wave hi and say hi. Like I look at her and she looks at me and then she turns and looks directly in that same spot and says hi yet again. So I, yes, she's seen something. And then uh, yesterday we were walking up the stairs and she kept looking behind her and looking behind her as we're going up the stairs. And I hadn't turned on the lights in the lower level. So it was kind of dim. And I kept looking and like, what are you looking at? Oh, okay. So I'm just kind of walking, going to ignore that, right? And then I hear the steps behind me creep. So I'm like, okay, we're going upstairs. There was nobody else on the property at the time. Just me and Leandra. Narrowing down the most active location in Preston Castle is difficult, according to Connie. The building is constantly under refurbishment thanks to the fundraising done year-round through tours, paranormal investigations, and the popular Halloween haunt attraction that incorporates the castle each fall. But if she were to pick one area that seems to produce the most evidence of paranormal activity, it would be the basement, where many of the young wards were brought into the castle and were introduced to the delousing pool, which was just as pleasant as it sounds. We have a delousing pool down in the basement next to our intake area. And it's pretty creepy down there. When the boys came in through intake, I can only imagine them, even of all ages, being scared, not knowing what they're going to do. They were stripped of their clothes. They were thrown in the pool, whether they could swim or not. So the, the actual emotion and energy level down there is pretty strong. That is also where we think that our guard hangs out. He hangs out in that particular room. Not sure why. There is a set of, looks like a little closet, but there's a set of stairs that I believe were used for the superintendent to use. It went directly up into his office, so he didn't have to walk through the entire castle to, um, to get to his office. But there's, for some reason, in that little stairway, we think that um, our our guard, John, hangs out in. That particular room itself, there's a lot going on. Even my husband, he doesn't like that particular room. He said he feels like the floor is almost moving under his feet, like a wave-type feel. And a lot of people have described feeling almost carsick in that room. In fact, just a few weeks ago, it was myself and two other team members, and we were down in the basement area, and the equipment was, it was, it was crazy. We just had this moment where all of our equipment was kind of going off. We had, we had a spirit box going, and there were words coming through that sounded like they were saying staff members, and we had this moment of feeling almost like we were being surrounded. That is definitely something that happens there. Among being touched, uh, we get windows rattling where when they shouldn't be rattling, and we'll hear doors closing, footsteps, just kind of a variety of all kinds of different stuff. Sybil walks the grounds of Preston Castle almost every day. And she says that her experiences convince her that she is rarely, if ever, alone on the property, regardless of which floor she's on. She's not surprised, since the conditions weren't always the best for the young wards who called the building home. She takes comfort in knowing that she's not the only one who has had strange feelings or experiences or has heard strange noises within the castle. I had brought in a couple of new docents with me and we were walking through and it was just the three of us that day. And we were in the dining hall and the dining hall is a large room off of the hallway. At the same time, we all three turned and looked at each other because we had all heard footsteps in the hallway. And we all looked at each other and we're like, did you hear that? Oh yes, I heard that. 
and we all peeked out into the hallway. There's nothing there. When I first started working, I did do um, a couple of tours when we did haunt tours. We were just standing and we were talking with some people and something grabbed onto my leg. And yeah, it, that was kind of creepy. And then there would be the mysterious music box, which is in the room that I staged. So um, several of us have adopted rooms throughout the castle and staged them to kind of give everybody an idea of what it might have looked like when somebody stayed there. And um, I had a friend who volunteered here who gave me a music box that she had had for several years that was her grandmother's and it had never played for her. And she had tried to have it fixed. And she's like, well, I, I was gonna give it away, but thought, you know, you might want it in your room up there. And I said, yeah, I'd love to have that music box. And so I put the music box in my room, shared the story with another friend of mine and she goes, I want to see the music box. And I'm like, okay. So we went up there to see the music box. She goes, it doesn't work. And I said, no, I've tried winding it and everything and it doesn't work. And, and I lifted the lid and lo and behold, da 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 I started playing this song. And I'm like, uh, it's never done that. When Preston Castle closed its doors in 1960, the building was left to the elements for decades. Luckily, before it was torn down, a foundation was formed to save the building, which, as mentioned before, continues to raise money for its renovation and refurbishment. Connie believes that the spirits in the building, both of any of the young wards who died there or the former employees who worked there, serving as guards, are happy to see the old building come back to life. And while activity is prevalent throughout, Connie emphasized that she believes anyone investigating the castle won't find anything evil lurking in its corners. Mischievous spirits, she said, are likely the only ghosts still left hanging around. It's such an incredible building and it's got so much history and the people that were there like Merle Haggard, it's, it's really got such a, uh, an interesting and a little bit of a sad history. You know, these boys weren't treated very nicely at times and so I could imagine you know even though I say we don't have anything there that's evil or or demonic or anything like that it it wasn't exactly a happy place yeah we we definitely could have our share of of upset spirits that that are there and so our main thing is to treat them with respect and kindness this is their home and we're a guest in their home. Thank you to Sybil Griffith and Connie Brenner for sharing their experiences and knowledge about Preston Castle in Ione, California. To learn more about this historic landmark or to book your tour, visit PrestonCastle.org. Tune into my new sister podcast, Conjuring Phantom History, for full interviews with historians and paranormal investigators who help tell the stories heard here on Phantom History. Music for this episode was provided by Purple Planet Music, Chad Crouch, and Silverman Sound. Follow Phantom History on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Threads, and TikTok, and don't forget to tune in to our YouTube channel, where you will find even more content from this podcast, my paranormal-themed bed and breakfast, Phantom History House, and full interviews with investigators, historians, psychics, and more. You can also learn more about Phantom History at phantomhistory.com. And, as always, thanks for listening. Hey, thanks so much for watching that. Remember, go to phantomhistory.com and sign up on the newsletter so you are alerted when we have a new podcast. And check out our new bed and breakfast at phantomhistoryhouse.com where you can book your stay and we can talk ghost stories in person in the library. See you then.